We're talking about church health and church planting and how to plant healthy churches. That's going to be essential if we're going to have, be planting real kingdom communities and churches that can reproduce in a healthy way. We already saw uh, the list of uh, various marks of uh, healthy growing churches that were given by Natural Church Development. I'm just going to show you one other list. There are many different lists like this. Uh, in the book we list a couple of the other sources for this kind of material. Um, this is a list that the Evangelical Free Church of America had been using. The centrality of God's Word, so it's a, based upon God's truth. That's going to be very foundational. Passionate spirituality, it's the relationship with Christ. It's not just a empty ritual, but the, the relationship to, to Christ and the Spirit. Fruitful evangelism, it's going to be a church that's reaching out, preaching the gospel, sharing, leading others to faith in Christ. Spirit-filled worship, so the worship experience is such that a God is truly honored and believers are truly built up. Great Commission driven, in other words, we are missional churches that are outwardly focused in reaching not only unbelievers to win them to Jesus Christ, but to be, as Jesus said, salt and light in the world and our communities. Leadership multiplication, which we've been talking about, you've got to have the health, the, the inner structure of the church through strong spiritual leaders to grow healthy. Church planting, that it's not just about us and our strengthening our own church, but that we're reaching out and we're extending and creating new kingdom communities in other areas of need. Stewardship of resources. And by this, whatever resources God has entrusted to us as believers, we want to be good stewards of that. So that may be stewardship of our financial resources. We're committed financially. That's stewardship of our gifts that we're bringing or discovering and developing our spiritual gifts and investing those to build up the body of Christ. It's a stewardship of our time that, we're, that members are willing to devote their time. And, and this is going to be uh, an evidence of devotion, commitment to Christ, commitment to the body, commitment to the mission of the church. Stewardship is going to be important for a healthy church. Intentional disciple making. In other words, it's not just about leading people to make a faith decision to become followers of Christ, but helping people intentionally to grow in their walk with Christ, to grow in bearing the fruit of the Spirit, and uh, to grow in obedience to all that Christ has commanded us. And then, of course, loving relationships. Uh, the greatest of all the fruit of the Spirit is love. The greatest commandment is to love God and to love neighbor as ourself. Uh, and so loving relationships in the body of Christ and towards those outside are all going to be essential to a healthy church. And so this is another list. And uh, these are all things that we find in Scripture that are going to be important to being followers of Christ. And um, one of the things you may want to consider doing with your church in your context would be to really to put together kind of your own list of what you think are the most important signs of good health. Now, certainly the scriptures give us many signs, and there's more than what we've even listed in these lists that could be mentioned. And I sometimes compare church health with human health in this regard. If I uh, were to go to uh, uh, certain countries in the tropics, I will need to be careful about malaria. Malaria is going to be a health risk in the tropics. Now, when I go to the northern countries, uh, and uh, if I were to go to Alaska or a very cold country, I don't need to worry about malaria, right? I might need to worry about frostbite. Frostbite would be a health hazard in the Arctic. And so, just as there are different health hazards regionally, um, the human body uh, a healthy human body looks the same, but there are other dangers to human health in other parts of the world. And so too, different cultural contexts have different spiritual health hazards for a church. What would be an example of that? Well, we've talked about different leadership styles. Some cultures have a very dominant leadership style that is normal in their culture. That's not necessarily a wrong thing. But it does have a hazard of leaders becoming overly dominant, 
overly authoritarian in a way that becomes unhealthy. Or the opposite could be true. You may have a culture that is very, very egalitarian, very, very participative to such an extent that it's almost impossible for leaders to truly lead. That's a different kind of a health hazard. And so um, different cultural contexts may create different health hazards. Some cultures, churches tend to split more often. People seem to just be more contentious. So unity would be something they might have on this list that's not on the list that, that is showing on screen now. And so what I've encouraged churches to do is not to just adopt somebody's list of, of what healthy signs are, but to discern for themselves by studying the scripture and examining their own church, their own cultural setting, what are going to be the most important health, church health factors in our setting. And uh, let me give you an example of how I've worked with other groups to do this. And uh, it's something that you might experiment with yourself. And uh, this would be um, something that I'm going to show you the example that I actually used in Dar es Salaam in uh, Tanzania. And this is how we went about it. First of all, we studied biblical passages that address the question of church health or church sickness. One time I was asked, well, the Bible doesn't use the language church health. Where does the Bible talk about healthy churches? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, Jesus himself talks about healthy churches. Where's that? Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. In Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus uh, is sort of like a, a doctor who examines these seven churches in Asia Minor and sort of gives really an evaluation, a health report on these seven churches. And so some of the churches are doing very well and they're, they're remaining faithful and they're serving. Some are not doing so well. Some like Ephesus was very strong in, in right teaching and serving and working hard but they were losing their first love. And so one of the things we began with was a study of Revelation chapter 2 and 3, and then we moved on to Ephesians chapter 4 uh, that describes the life of the church, and then we even took some other biblical texts that the leaders themselves felt were important in their context to describe what a healthy body of Christ looks like. And uh, we actually then sort of made a list. We had a whiteboard. Now, uh, this is Kiswahili here. You're not going to be able to, uh, I don't suppose, most of you are going to be able to read what's written on this whiteboard here. That's not the point. The point was they generated just a list of qualities that were coming out of these, these different passages. Now, on the one side, there are signs of health. For example, good teaching and resisting false doctrine. On the other side, dangers to health. For example, losing your first love or self-sufficiency. And so we would list the positive characteristics of a healthy church. We listed negative characteristics of an unhealthy church. And so from this list, we began to, to work together. And then we began to sort of, in this way, we wrote down the key factors on three by five cards. And then the people sorted them into little categories because we had a pretty long list. And, you know, you don't want to have a list of 30 marks of church health. That gets a little bit unwieldy. So we tried to sort of boil it down. And uh, so we had uh, the leaders sort of sorting this out. You can see we were just meeting in somebody's living room. Nothing fancy here. And uh, they're sitting on the floor sort of sorting out some of the, the things. And, you know, you might have two things that are very similar. And so you'd put those together. And uh, they're processing this. And then they sort of boiled that down into their list of indicators. It might have been eight, it might have been 10. And uh, they created then their own list of what they felt on their basis of their Bible study and on the basis of their experience in their churches, what they felt were the important things. Now this can become then a useful tool it's not going to be as sophisticated as natural church development with questionnaires and all kinds of evaluative materials that can be put into a computer and processed. But 
in a very basic, simple way, these can become teaching points for a church. They can become points where a church can evaluate where they're at. When I was in the Philippines, we went through this process where groups of leaders from each church would have a group and they would go through some of these uh, factors and sort of grade themselves. How well are we doing here? How well are we doing there? Not a highly sophisticated process, but one that helps people uh, reflect, to pray, to listen to how God might be speaking to them, saying this is an area in need of improvement. This is an area where you're strong. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. And so uh, going through this process from time to time can be helpful for a church uh, to keep focused and to make sure that uh, unhealthy features are not sort of festering and growing and become a major problem later. Now here's some questions sort of for application for you as you may be processing this material and saying, well, what does this mean for me? Well, examine some of those lists for church health and evaluate at what points your church is strong or weak. That's something that usually is best done when the leadership team, you get several people with different perspectives. In fact, one time we did this at a church retreat. We had all our key workers. It wasn't everybody from the church. We had our key workers go for a weekend retreat and we began to go through some of these. I'll show you what we did uh, later on in another section. So you may want to evaluate. And then consider walking your church through the process of creating that list of health indicators that apply to your context. A process similar to, to maybe what I was describing, or maybe you've got a better one. That was just one way to do it that I was showing you. And then what specific steps do you need to take to address your areas of weakness? So it's not going to do a whole lot of good to go to the doctor and the doctor says, you know, you've got to lose weight. And uh, you say, well, thank you very much. And you go home and uh, next year you show up at the doctor and the doctor says, well, you know, you still need to lose weight, don't you? Um, that's not going to really help your health very much, is it? And it's not going to help a church to go through a process like this and at the end of the day not really change anything, not really take steps. So the question here becomes, if we've identified a weakness, what will be those specific steps we're going to take to address that? Do we need more teaching? Maybe we need uh, more intentionality in our small groups. Uh, maybe we need a program that's going to address this particular concern. I don't know what that's going to look like, but you'll need to then take some kind of intentional steps where you say, we're going to strengthen this aspect of our church that is uh, not healthy. All right, so that will conclude our section on church health, church reproduction. And we will uh, move on then to our next section. Now, there are a number of ways to actually go about discerning how healthy a church is. Um, the question was raised along the way here. Well, how do you know if a church is really healthy? What, what makes a church a healthy church versus a church that's not healthy? Well, we know no church is perfect. Every church is made up of saved sinners. And we're all in the process of sanctification, and so we are going to have issues along the way. No church is going to be a perfect church, all right? So I will be clear about that. But we do think, believe that there are certain marks that a church, if it's developing in a, in a healthy way, not a perfect way, but in a healthy way, there should be certain marks. Now, different, different theologians and different researchers have come up with different lists of of uh, marks of what they believe is important for a healthy, a growing church. And uh, I want to look at just a, a couple of those with you. Um, one which has become very widespread and popular is the so-called natural church development. And uh, these materials were developed in Germany and they've been translated into, uh, oh, probably a couple dozen languages by now. Um, but they're very widely used internationally. And uh, in fact, Natural Church Development has developed a whole series of 
questionnaires and materials uh, that churches can use to sort of try and objectively measure uh, how well they're doing in these different areas of quality. And so they talk about eight quality areas. It's not the word health, but it's basically the same idea. And their, their, their conviction is, and they believe they have research to support this, that if a church is doing well in these eight areas, they'll probably also be a growing church. It's very likely they will be. And you see here the list of those eight areas, empowering leadership, gift-based ministry, passionate spirituality, effective structures, inspiring worship services, holistic small groups, need-oriented evangelism, loving relationships. And they say the key is the adjective. In other words, every church has some kind of leadership. The question is, does it have empowering leadership? Every church has some kind of ministry, but is it gift-based ministry? And so on. And so the key here is for a church to take their assessment program and to examine uh, which areas they're stronger in, which areas they're weaker in. And they believe that if you begin to work on those areas of weakness, the church will actually begin to grow. Um, and they use this illustration of a barrel. Maybe you've seen this before, where uh, if you had a barrel and um, these are called staves, these pieces of wood around the barrel, and they're not all equal height, as you can tell, um, that barrel is not going to hold any more water than the shortest stave, right? The water is just going to go out again. And so their philosophy is, they call this the minimum factor. Uh, of your eight qualities of your church, you look at the one that is your least, is your weakest factor, and it's like the lowest stave on that barrel. They can say, you know, that barrel is not going to hold any more water if you make this stave longer, right? You can say, let's work on this quality. We'll make that longer. Barrel's not going to hold any more water, right? If you want that barrel to hold more water, you've got to raise this stave. And that's what they're saying about the quality marks of a church. If a church, say, uh, needs-based uh, evangelism or needs-oriented evangelism, if that's your weak spot, it's not going to help you to work on inspiring worship. You've got to improve your evangelism. And so that's kind of their philosophy of doing an assessment and then working on your area of need. And uh, they have materials. And once you determine that what your area of weakness is, then, um, then they have materials that can help your church to say, okay, we're going to work on uh, our needs-oriented evangelism and we'll improve that. Well, I don't want to go into an evaluation of natural church development as a system. Uh, it's, it's very well developed, very widespread use. Many, 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 literally thousands of churches have found this helpful. And uh, that's one of those resources out there that uh, you could consider making use of.